Right, guys, so track day today. I'm gonna take the Ranger today. So what I'm gonna do today is I wanna hook up the dome map. Matt Happel did a video on the Holly closed loop boost control with the Terminator X using the map sensor wire. I wanna test that thing out and see how it works on the truck and load that in there and then try to put the truck on like 17 pounds, 20 pounds right away and see how it does. So let's go through that. So first thing we're gonna do is find this map sensor plug off the Holley Terminator X harness. So you're gonna be looking at the red and black wire. It's the middle wire in the harness. So I'm actually gonna be stripping my extension harness that I have. So what I did was I found the middle wire on that as a green wire. What I do is I strip the casing off. I don't split the wire, I just strip the casing off of it and then I put a little split in the copper so I can run my wire through the middle of it and then twist it down so this is what it looks like and that's basically all the wiring so taped it back up and slid the loom over and that's all it was okay so showed the wiring for how to wire it up to the map sensor signal so I'm gonna go through and create the inputs and set it up basically using the same settings that Matt had on the video on the sloppy mechanics channel and we'll test it out see how it works so first thing I'm gonna do is go to IO and I'm going to select inputs and I'm going to create the input. We'll call it dome map. Configure. And it's going to be a 5 volt signal. Click on configure. And then we'll set it up as a Holly three bar sensor because I have a three bar map sensor in it. So then we'll leave that there. And then I'm going to go into my pin map. Now I have dome map here as unassigned inputs. I'm going to drag this down to my remaining input, input three. And then that part should be good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the boost ICF. It's going to be dome pressure only. You only have one option. That's why we're doing it this way. Three port. I'm using a four port, but going to leave it on three port. Going to dome control setup. Leave it on compressor, 30 PSI per second. And our dome pressure input is going to be dome map. That's the input we just created. So this is going to be 1.5, 2, and then 0.5. And... Those are the settings Matt was using, so we'll test it out and see how it goes. So next thing you're going to do is go over to inputs and outputs. You see this boost plus solenoid is not defined, so we're going to want to define that. Go up to your pin map, outputs, boost plus solenoid, drag that to where your boost controller output is, and that should be done. Now you see J1B10 is defined and you have your pulse width modulated negative output type. So I don't think I'm going to set up a trans break or scramble or anything like that. I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to go into the boost versus time and then I'll set what I want this to be at. And I'm just going to do 15 across the board. We'll leave it at all 15 as a target and then see where that gets us. to boost by speed and I ramped it in from like 6 to 13 
it still seemed like it wanted to do 17 pounds and I was at 15 so but that was kind of a really quick pull it was still pulling duty cycle and it, the boost was still coming down so I probably just didn't give it enough time so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ramp the boost in slower should help with traction and basically it'll be at peak boost 13 pounds at like 100 miles an hour and then it's kind of ramped in so it's it's ramping from 6 at 0 mile per hour to 13 at 100 mile per hour so and it's kind of a nice smooth rollover I don't know it's kind of a nice smooth ramp so it hopefully won't want to overshoot so we'll see it just it works we just got to keep playing with it and get it where we need it Okay, so here's pretty much what I ended up with. I still got to do more testing with it and get some good logs without wheel spin. So I'm going to try to do that at the track today, but I'm using boost versus speed. So before I said I started at 6 PSI, but I changed it to 0 because I want it to start a little bit lower. I'll show you the reason for that. So the reason was you can see this dark red line right here. This is at 6 PSI, six pounds of boost right here. So basically the boost versus speed table didn't start working, didn't take over until it got to that six pounds. So it's not going to start correcting before what the target is on the table. So I basically held a hundred percent boost duty until it saw six pounds and then it started to adjust. So now I'm going to have it start to adjust at, at zero. So basically right you can see when the red line came up right here, that's like right at 0.2 PSI. So as soon as it sees a little bit of boost, it slams the controller to 100% until it meets your target on your table and then it starts to ramp it out. So what I'm going to do is have it at zero. It's going to ramp in earlier and then hopefully it doesn't overshoot. So you can see the overshoot right here because it's trying to pull it down but it ended up overshooting, which ended up hitting my target of 13 pounds, but then kind of pulled it out, which I'm discounting most of this because you can tell by the RPM and throttle position. This is all wheel spin right here. So RPM comes up and then it starts to come back down. That's all wheel spin because I'm still at 100% throttle. So that's why the wheel speed kind of came up and plateaued and there was no load on the wheels. So boost ended up coming down. So this log I didn't really get a whole lot out of except for the fact that it's starting right at six pounds where my table was. So now I have it like this starting at zero and it's just going to ramp with speed and then I'll be able to adjust that throughout the day. And the goal is that it's going to be ramping it in slow enough and correcting early enough that once it gets to my target it just kind of stays there. <laughs> 